Okay, so if you have, haven't given me this uh, case analysis worksheet, So then today we're going to talk about business cycle. So business cycle is sometimes the economy is growing well, other times the economy is not growing well. It seems to move in a cycle. So in his, if we look at history, we can see uh, that kind of business cycle. So even economists 150 years ago, they wrote things like, uh, people think that the economy is going very badly, but it's not going to be bad, way, bad forever, right? And then people think the economy is going very well, but it's not going to be going very well forever. Okay? So people can sometimes get uh, a little bit blinded by what's happening at the moment, right? They exaggerate. Things are, economy is going badly, people think it's going to be worse, keep being worse. Economy is going well, people think it's going to keep getting better. Well, actually, it seems to move in a cycle. Economy goes badly, and then well, and then badly, and then well. So here's an example of Herbert Hoover, who was president-elect in the U.S. in 1928. He said, we in America are nearer to the final triumph over poverty than ever before in history of any land. We shall soon, with the help of God, be inside of the day when poverty will be banished from this nation. So the they call them the Roaring Twenties in the US. In the Twenties, the stock market was going up. <coughs> the economy was going very well in the US. And then what happened in the late Twenties and early Thirties? Great Depression. Great Depression, right? So uh, he thought things were always going to get better. But then there was the Great Depression. Okay? Then some people in the Great Depression probably thought, oh, it's always going to get worse. Okay? But in the end, it got better. So, <coughs> does everybody understand the Great Depression? Yes. Can you tell us about the Great Depression? <laughs> hmm? What was that? In the end of the World War I, the many factory hmm. produced the many products, but the demand. the demand is down, so the factory owner fire the labor, and the, they labor don't spend any product. So <coughs> like a vicious circle. Do you understand vicious circle? This circle is this happens, then this happens, then this happens, right? The opposite is the virtuous. Virtuous circle is the other way around, right? So you said that demand went down, they laid off the worker, the worker had less salary, demand went down more, they laid off more workers, okay? That's the vicious circle. Okay, so the unemployment was about 25% in the US. Great Depression, so the highest in modern history. Okay. So the Great Depression shook not only the foundations of the world economy, but also the self-confidence of the economics profession. A little bit like the recession, the financial crisis in 2008, also shook the economics profession. People asked why didn't economists predict the Great Depression, and why didn't economies, economists predict, or more economists predict, the uh, 
recession in 2008. Okay. So the search for questions or explanations focused on these questions. How stable is a market-driven economy? What forces cause instability? What, if anything, can the government do to promote steady economic growth? So that's a big question nowadays for economics. Okay? So-called sustainable growth. Sustainable means we can maintain the growth. Right? So if we are growing at 15% a year, can we sustain that? Yes. Can we maintain this? No. Every year? No. It's too high, right? It's going to come down again. And up again and down again. So nowadays they want to make the sustainable growth. Let's say in the developed economies about two to three percent, right? In the emerging economies like China around six percent or seven percent. Okay? Why? Because the emerging economies have still have to catch up on the developed economy. So they have more uh, opportunity for growing. Okay? The developed economy is making the high capacity. The emerging economy is not making the same productivity. So they have more capacity, so they can make a higher growth rate. Okay? So we want to do this kind of thing. So <coughs> out of the Great Depression, People wanted to know why. Why was this happening? And they wanted answers and solutions. So this was, we already discussed the basics of macroeconomics, right? So the basic purpose of macroeconomics is to explain how and why economies grow and what causes the ups and downs in the business cycle. So just a brief review of the macroeconomics. So macroeconomics is the study of the aggregate economic behavior of the economy. So what were the three main things we studied in macroeconomics? Three head main headings we studied. Money, Money output, output, expectations. Okay, so the relationship between money and output and expectations. Inflation is included in money. So <coughs> that's studying that those kind of things which affect the whole economy. So here we can see, uh, if we look at this graph, we can see unemployment from 1900 to 1940. So we said that the unemployment in the US was dropped down low here, and then up and down, up to 25%, and then back down again. <coughs> of course, if people are losing their jobs, then the prices can fall, so we have deflation. If we have a high unemployment, we can have a low inflation rate. Okay. So some people might wonder, even though they have a loose monetary policy these days, why don't we have inflation problem? We, in the US they had a higher unemployment, also the stable wages, the wages were not going up. Okay. But what they're afraid of is this kind of thing, right? Inflation might come later. So. How do we measure, that's unemployment and inflation, but we have output, output to measure the upturns and downturns of the business cycle. How do we measure output? GDP, GDP right? Real GDP? What does real GDP mean? When we see the word real, what does that mean? Usually. Hmm? We talked about the real interest rate and the nominal interest rate. Minus inflation. Okay. So if my if I have a GDP growth of twenty percent, that's very impressive, right? But what about if my inflation was thirty percent? Is that impressive now? No. No, it was minus growth, right? So we have to talk about real GDP. So. I've got adjusting for inflation. So the value of final output produced in a period adjusted for changing prices. Changes in employment mirror the change in production. If our output is going down, unemployment is going up. 
Okay. So we can have a look at what the business cycle looks like in the next one, right? So we have the GDP grows over time, but we want this. We want the GDP to grow to 3% a year, right? But what really happens is some years the GDP grows a lot, some years it's not growing, right? Then again it grows a lot, not growing, GDP grows a lot. This is the business cycle. So the upswing is an increase in the volume. The volume means the number of goods and services. Downturn, the volume production goes down. So this kind of contraction and expansion is, is a business cycle. Do you understand contraction? <laughs> expansion? Yes. So if, if something is cold, will it contract or expand? Something is frozen. Contract. contract. If I heat something up, expands, right? So we talk about in economics too, contraction and expansion. So we're going to look at this uh, US economy, business cycles in the US history, right? So the dashed line, this line here, uh, that's the long-term growth rate of the US economy. Okay, so that's 3%. So from 1929 to 2009, the US economy average growth rate is 3%. But, so 3% is the average, right? It's growing at 3%. But sometimes the economy, we saw in the Great Depression, minus 15% of GDP. Okay? The World War, after the World War, also a big drop in output. Okay? Uh, during the World War, they were building a lot of... What were they making a lot of during the war? Military equipment. Military equipment, right? So the output was going up. People were working very hard to produce all the things. Uh, again, in the war, we can see output can go up and then down after the war. So every time, every 10 years, right, we can see that there is a recession. Then growth, recession, growth, recession, growth, recession, growth, recession, okay? So overall, the, the trend is uh, around 3%. So this time it's been growing slowly. When do you think will be the next recession? Soon? No. Never? No. Are you going to be like President Hoover? No. Never another recession? Okay, so... <coughs> recession, definition of recession is when the GDP declines for two or more consecutive quarters. So just one, one quarter negative, not recession, okay? Two, more than two quarters, it's a recession. What is a quarter? Three months. Three months, okay? A growth recession is just when our GDP is below, uh, currently the GDP growth below the long-term trend of 3%. In November 1982, the US economy made an economic expansion that lasted over seven years. They created 20 million jobs and GDP increased over 1 trillion. Okay, so at that, they had some tax cuts, fiscal stimulus, and also monetary stimulus in the 80s. So here is the business slump. Do you understand slump? Yes. Is slump positive or negative? Negative. So if you slump, uh, can I see somebody who's sitting slumping? Not really. <laughs> Korean students did well compared to the Western students. Maybe you're slumping a little bit. <laughs> right? So slumping is like this. So slumping is uh, kind of going down. <coughs> so here we can see that great depression. <coughs> there was a 43 months was very long time. GDP declined total by 50%. Unemployment rate 25%. So there hasn't been anything as bad as that, right? So apart from that, in history we can see other ones. Usually they're taking about you know 10 months. And 
unemployment rate is sitting about 9 or 10 percent. So, do you have any question about that business cycle and the U.S. U.S. history? No. U.S. U.S. economy is depression and other world to influence the economy. Yes, we're going to talk about that later. Yes, the international business cycle. So, good question. But yes. Some countries are, are very correlated with the U.S. Some countries are not correlated with the U.S. Depends on how much trade you do with the U.S., how connected your economy is to the U.S. But nowadays, because of globalization, what do you think? Is the international business cycle getting closer together or further away? Closer together, right? Nowadays, the countries have more links, especially financial markets. So they're getting closer together, right? China, in the recent crisis, for example, China wasn't affected because China's banking industry, China controls, the government controls the banking industry. It's not free market, right? So because of that reason, Chinese people are not allowed to invest in stocks in another country, okay? Chinese banks are not allowed to have regulations. So the Chinese banks was not invested in, U in the US. So Chinese banks uh, weren't weren't badly affected, for example, during the the recent crisis. So, <clears throat> let's talk about the financial variables and the business cycle. So, what is the relationship between the stock market, the bond market, and the business cycle? So. <clears throat> Here we have pro-cyclical and leading. So pro-cyclical means that when the stock market is going down, the GDP is also going down, right? So they're moving in the same direction. That's pro-cyclical. So leading means that first the stock market goes down. stock market goes down first, then the GDP goes down later, okay, then the output goes down. So if we look at the US crisis recently, the US stock market started to go down the end of 2006, 2007, the stock market was going down, right? But recession wasn't until September 2008, okay? So first of all, the stock, there was a problem in the stock market. Bond prices, uh, so again, here bond prices can be confusing. We talked about bonds and yields, right? But if a bond is, if a bond is uh, cost of one million dollars, okay? Then we pay 900,000 for the, for the bond, right? So the price of the bond goes down bond price goes down to 800,000, what's going to happen to the yield? The yield will go up, right? So a little bit confusing. The bond price is going down, but the yield is going up. So it's getting more expensive for countries or the companies to borrow money. Okay? So the bond price goes down, it means the interest rate or the yield is going up. So. The interest rate paid on short term, we have a difference between long term and short term bonds. Uh, the interest rate is pro cyclical and lagging. So let's have a look at uh, bonds in a little bit more difference detail. So the spread, the spread means the difference between long term and short term government bonds is leading and pro cyclical. And this is a very good predictor of recessions. So uh, let's have a look, well let's look at the graphs. What right here is the stock market. So here's the S&P 500 index. What is the S&P 500 in index? What does it mean? Very big company in US. How many companies? 500. 
500, an index of 500. We could take all 10,000 companies on the stock market, right? Do we need to take all 10,000 companies on the stock market? No, the, the, the top 500 companies gives us enough of a picture about what's happening in the stock market. So we use that kind of index, okay? So it's not so clear here because the numbers are so small. One thing we can see is that if we invested in stocks in the 80s, we'd be quite happy in the year 2000. Okay, what happened in the US between in the early 90s to 2000? IT boom. IT boom. Mm -hmm. IT. This was the IT boom, right? So the price went up a lot, too high. Then there was the IT bubble burst. Okay. Then what's this? What's this one here? The stock market is going up again. If you bought stocks in after the stock market fell a lot, seems to be a good time to buy stocks, right? Yes. Then what was this one here? Stock fund. Why? Why did the stock market go up a lot here in the U.S.? Yes. Our terror. U.S. stock the terror terrorism war. What's the reason for the stock market? The U.S. put down the interest rates to one percent. Okay. If you put down the interest rate to one percent, do you want to buy bonds or stocks? <coughs> stocks. You're just going to get one percent if you buy a bond, right? So people at that they lend money. The interest rate is one percent. Uh -huh. Then they buy stocks. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also they buy houses. So this kind of was a real estate bubble. So what kind of company's stocks go up when we have a real estate bubble? Demon Brothers. Bank stocks, right? Why does bank stocks go up when we the house price is going up? They They're doing, giving out a lot of loans. They're doing good business, right? And the house price is high, so the bank's balance sheet is getting better. Do you understand balance sheet? Yes. So some people, there's different ways. They don't have to buy real estate. If the real estate market is going well, they'll invest in bank stock, for example. Okay? Uh, you can also invest in the stock of the construction company. Okay? A lot of building material companies, they make cement or other things. Okay? So people, this was kind of real estate boom and then real estate crash. But what we can see here is what happens. The stock market starts going down first. Okay? Earlier, then we have the fall in the recession, the GDP. Okay, here again, this, in 2006, the stock market starts to go down. Okay, then we have the recession in 2000 and later. Okay, at this time, so we can see the relationship is it seems to be like this. First of all, the <coughs> stock market is going down. The 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 <coughs> there is a bubble. Also, the central bank can raise the interest rates, cause some drop in the stock market. Recently, we saw the U.S. stock market going down. Uh, one of the reasons is the people expect that the U.S. will increase the interest rate uh, this year or early next year. So, <coughs> we have the interest rate on the bond. Okay, so we said that when the yield gets high, price of the bond goes down, then the yield gets high, right? So we can see that this is the interest rate or the yield on the bonds. So again, we can see the interest rate is going up before the recession, okay? Interest rate on the bonds went up before the recession. Interest rate on the bond went up before the recession. Again, what we can learn from this graph is that I was complaining about the house price one time to my parents. They told me, but we had to pay 16% interest on our mortgage in the 80s. So even if you have the house price is more expensive now, the interest rate is a lot lower. Right? So in the past, people in the 80s, people had quite high interest rate. You can see the trend is that the interest rate has been coming down over time. Nowadays, it's at very historical lows. Okay, so anyway, the bond price interest rate is going up. You can have to predict a recession. Okay, so we said that if the interest rate is going up, this is passed on 
to the lenders, people are going to buy less things, they're going to get less loans, they're going to buy less cars, less houses, demand can fall, we can have a recession. Okay, so another predictor. Uh, so here is the spread between the long-term and the short-term government bonds. So spread is the difference in the interest rate. So what can you see here? What's predicting the recession? There's a big difference or a small difference? Small difference, right? So if I have two bonds, if I have a uh, 10-year, six-month or one-year bond is short-term, let's say, and I have a 10-year bond, okay? So the 10-year bond price is about, say, 3%. Okay. And then the six month bond price is about 0.5% normally. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Why is the 10 year bond higher yield than the six month bond? Long distance. Longer period. There's more what? There's more what over a longer period? With uncertainty, right? I don't know what can happen in five years or six years or seven years. Okay. There's more uncertainty over the long period. Also, I, I have to leave my money in this bond. I can't take it. Right? I can sell the bond, but with this one, I can change my money into cash every six months. Okay? So that's a normal situation. But what happens before the recession is that uh, they, they get close together. There's not much difference between the six-month bond and the 10-year bond. Okay? So, people uh, during the recession, let's say then we have this one is going to be 2%, and this one is 2%. So, if we have here, we have, if the yield goes up, what's happening to the demand for the bond? More demand or less demand? More demand. So, if we have a higher price, is there more demand or less demand? So, the price change from 900 to 950, is that more demand or less demand? The price went up from 900 to 950, is that more demand or less demand? Less demand. Less demand means a higher price? What's the relationship between price and supply and demand? Yeah. Demand goes up, what happens to price? Price goes up. So, I have a bicycle. There's no demand for my bicycle. Nobody wants to buy it. The price is low, right? Yeah. Yes. Then there's demand. Five people want to buy my bicycle. Can I increase the price of my bicycle? Yes. 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 So the demand for the, the short-term bond goes up, the price goes up. What happens to the yield? The price goes up, the yield goes down, right? So if we have the opposite case here, what happens? Is the demand going up or, or going down here? The yield is going up, so demand is going down, right? So you try to get used, you can remember those things, you know. Yield, talk about the yield for bonds, just remember, right? Yield goes up, demand is going down, right? The yield goes down, demand is going up. I know that because I'm used to it very quickly, right? I see a low bond price, I say there's high demand for that bond. Like I see the German government bond, very low, high demand, okay? If I see a high bond price, low demand. So here, for the six month bond, there's going to be low demand. And for the 10 year bond, there's going to be higher demand. So what that means is that people think, in the short term, the economy is going to have some problem. Okay? Yes. But, so they actually think a recession is coming. So they think maybe a recession is coming. We are not that interested in the short, the short term is actually gets riskier than the long term. 
Do you understand that idea? Yes. So the recession is finished, then 10 years is actually safer than the short term. So we can see that the spread, <coughs> uh, the people don't want the short term bonds as much and they prefer the long term bonds, then maybe there's a recession coming. So this one has the strongest relationship between the recession and this indicator. So this is the best predictor of a recession. If you want to predict the recession, when the spread between the short term and long term bonds is very small, then that could be the prediction of the recession. Right here we can see quite clear just before the recession and again before the recession. The spread is going down suddenly, right? Quite suddenly. So What about the corporate bonds? Uh, the last one we didn't mention. Uh, the spread between the corporate bonds and the government bonds. Okay, it's counter-cyclical, or pro-cyclical. Uh, so as the GDP is going down, the spread is going up. So the reason is that Companies are more likely to run out of, mo of money in recessions, and they have to pay higher bonds, okay? higher rates on their bond. So which do you prefer to buy in a recession, the government bond or the company bond? Hmm? Why? Hmm? Why don't you want to buy the company bond in a recession? You prefer to buy the government bond. <coughs> Company could be bankrupt, right? Will the government be bankrupt? No. Hmm? Probably not. We don't have many instances of the government losing their money. Well, we have recently Greece, Uruguay, Argentina, where people who bought the government bonds lost their money. But it's not very common. But we can see a lot of examples of companies that went bankrupt, like Lehman Brothers, right? or other companies where people lost, lost their money investing in the company. Okay, so is that, that's what we expect to happen in a crisis. Keep the cost for companies, it's quite clear that during the crisis the companies need to pay more money for loans. Okay? And the spread is bigger between them and the government uh, bonds. So here we can see the spread is increasing. Spread is increasing, spread is increasing, spread is in This one really high, right? So nobody wanted to lend money to companies in 2010. They had to pay 6% for a loan, average loan for the companies. The, or sorry, the difference between the government bond and the company bond was 6%. So companies were paying about 8%. <coughs> Do you have any question about this? relationship between the financial variables and the business cycle. So then discuss with your partner about each one. So first discuss about the stock market. So you're discussing the relationship between the stock market and GDP. Okay. What is the relationship between the stock market and GDP growth? So discuss with your partner. Thank you. 
Okay, so who can tell me what's the relationship between the stock market and the business cycle, the GDP? We have <laughs> these words, pro-cyclical or counter-cyclical. We have leading or lagging. So what is the stock, what's the relationship between the stock market and the GDP growth? Uh, uh, if the stock market is strong, uh, the yes. company will get more money into uh, product and invest. If the stock market goes down, companies get more money or less money? More money. Uh, less money. Where do they get the money from? Uh, <laughs> What two words will you use here? Is it pro cyclical or counter cyclical? Is it leading or lagging? Pro cyclical moving in the same direction. Leading, the stock market goes down first, or lagging, the stock market goes down after. Have a guess. There's only two choices. The first one. <laughs> Lagging. Lagging. Yeah. So the GDP goes down first and then the stock market? Stomach. Stomach. Leading. What's that leading? And then is it pro cyclical or counter cyclical? Pro cyclical. Pro cyclical. Okay. So discuss with your partner about the next one. Interest rates on government bonds. What's the relationship between interest rates on government bonds and, and the GDP growth? So if you look at the graph here, Tell me what is the relationship between the interest rate on government bonds and the stock and the GDP? Gross? Is it leading or lagging? What's happening first? Something's happening to the bond price first, or something's happening to the recession first? Recession first. No. Bond price first, right? We can see here that something is happening. Something is happening to the bond price first. Then we have recession. Okay. Something is happening to the bond price first. Then we have recession. Something is happening to the bond price first. Then we have recession. So, are the interest rates leading or lagging? Leading. leading is first, right? They're leading. Something is happening to them first, and then we have recession. Okay, what's happening to them? The interest rate is 
going up. So the interest rate and the bond price is going to be different. Which is pro-cyclical and which is counter-cyclical? Which one? Bond price or interest rate? Because they're opposite. If the bond price goes up, the interest rate goes down. If the bond price goes down, the interest rate goes up. So which one is counter-cyclical and which one is pro-cyclical? So the bond price, is that pro-cyclical or counter-cyclical? Pro-cyclical, right? Bond price goes down, interest rate goes down. Or sorry, uh, GDP goes down. What about the interest rate? Pro-cyclical or counter-cyclical? Counter-cyclical, right? The interest rate goes up, the GDP is going down. Okay. So discuss about this one, the strongest predictor. The spread between the long-term and short-term government bonds. Okay, what's the relationship? Do you understand spread? Yes. What does spread mean? Difference. 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 Okay. <coughs> Difference. Well, discuss with your partner. Ask your partner, what's the relationship between the spread in long- and short-term government bonds and the business cycle? GDP growth. Look at the graph. So just in case people are a little bit confused about the bond price here, this is the US government bonds. This is 2008. One month bond, you could get 3% interest in 2008. Right? 10 year bond, 3.9% interest. Hardly any difference in 2008. If we look at now, 2015, how much interest do you get for one month bond? 0.02. Three months, 0.02. How about 10 year, 2.1%. Right? So now we have a big difference between the short, mainly the short term is the big changer, right? Short term bonds in 2015, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 3 percent, okay, across the board. All right. So, who can explain to me what is is this leading or lagging? The spread is it leading or lagging? Leading. Leading. Yes. Okay. 
And then, is it pro-cyclical or counter-cyclical? So if the spread is going down, is the GDP going down? Yes. What's that? Pro-cyclical. Okay. And then the last one, discuss with your partner, the interest rate spread between the corporate company and government bonds. So what is the relationship? The spread between corporate and government bonds. So this is the last one. Okay, so is this pro cyclical or counter cyclical? Pro cyclical or counter cyclical? Counter cyclical. It's going the opposite, right? So why, why do, why does the spread get bigger? Because the government is the potential, more potential, and corporate is the bankrupt too. Yes. So government is a safe, more safe compared to the companies, right? So the spread is low, usually the economy is going well. Okay, I lend money to, to Microsoft in the mid-90s. I lend money to Google, no problem. Okay, but 2001, there is a crisis. I'm not so sure about lending money to Microsoft or Google, right? So, do you have any question then about what we studied today? The relationship between the government bond price and GDP. This one. So uh, we can see that before the before the recession, the interest rate on the government bonds is going up. It's costing the government more money. <coughs> Also, the central bank is putting up the interest rate. Okay? So, this can help to cause the recession because people, if I put up the interest rate, you're not going to take out loan. Maybe the company won't take the loan. The interest rate is too high. Okay? So, uh, it dampens the expectation and dampens the economy. So, we have this problem at the moment in the US. The US is talking about rising the interest rate. So people are, because people expect they will rise the interest rate, already they're selling some stuff on the stock market, right? So already the stock market went down somewhat in the US. So this can affect the people's expectations and amount of money being lent, right? So this can indicate, if the interest rate is going up, it can indicate that we might be having a recession okay? later. Also another factor, investors might think, the economy is going to have some problems, so the demand for the bond goes down and the yield goes up. And then let's finish there for today.
Oh, I see.